I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Call the Coach recorded on October 25th, 2019. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches, share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world, literally around the world this time, and you'll want to listen carefully. If you're listening live, we'd love to have you join us in our chat room. There's a link above the video window to get in there. If you are listening after the fact and you have questions, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Michael Librant is our host today. Mike is a workplace consultant here with me at Gallup, and Micah, we're usually doing this on Thursdays, but theme Thursday, but welcome to Call the Coach. Thanks, Jim. I feel, it feels more than like my pleasure to get to spend an extra day talking about this fantastic community that we have of strengths and to get to hang out with you and our fine friends from Rhode Island. Hey. So we do we do have some fine friends uh, here today. We've got a very important one. And I think if you're listening to this with some earbuds or you're, uh, you're out for a walk, buckle up. Like you're, we've, we've got some great stuff ahead for you. Micah, take a second and introduce our guests today. Sure. So today, buckle up because you're in for some fantastic stories. Um, I remember years ago when I heard that the state of Rhode Island here in the U.S. was gearing up to be what they called very nicely and very accurately, it turns out, the first strengths-based state. And there's a great group of folks uh, through Leadership Rhode Island who have been committed to actually making that happen. And today we get to hear about the surprises and the excitement and the journey that has unfolded in one specific chapter of a group of folks in Rhode Island. First, we're going to hear um, from Priscilla Gonzalez Santos. She is the HR manager at a company called Edizia. Uh, then we're also going to be joined by Marcus Yanetto. He is a strengths coach with Leadership Rhode Island. And both of these people bring, I think, just that real life perspective of what can actually happen when you're focusing on strengths and trying to use strengths to help people truly improve what they do every day. Um, what you're going to find as we tell this story and as we learn from these two experts is that oftentimes there are some surprises. There are some hidden little gems that maybe show up as bonus uh, when you when you truly immerse yourself in this experience and open yourself up to what it could be. So I want to start with Priscilla. And Priscilla, I'll just give your top five as a way of a uh, Clifton Strengths version of your introduction, and then we'll hear from you of what you'd add to that. But Priscilla leads with harmony, relator, discipline, focus, and restorative. She has a brilliant resume that if you checked out Eventbrite, you can probably see some of the details of everywhere that her strengths have taken her. But Priscilla, welcome to the program. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk for the next 50 minutes. <laughs> We're excited to have you. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you became involved with this? So um, I work for Edicia. We're a food manufacturer here in Rhode Island. We make products that look like this. It's a peanut paste to treat and prevent malnutrition in children. Um, I first came across strengths uh, in 2017 when I joined um, Leadership Rhode Island's core program. Um, and I got a chance to learn about my own strengths and how to apply them in the workplace and also personally, and um, just fell in love with the idea that um, there was an assessment out there that uh, was intended to celebrate everyone and sort of bring everyone to an equal playing field. Um, and um, immediately thought that this was something that I wanted to bring to Edicia um, for everyone else to benefit from. So um, it's been quite a journey the last three years. Yeah. I can't wait to hear more about it. First, I want to introduce our other player in the in the quadrant, if you're watching our, our four box here on the video screen. Um, Marcus, your top five, connectedness, relator, developer, belief, and positivity. Um, how did you come to be involved in this? Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Mike Ritz, who's the executive director of Leadership Rhode Island, uh, asked me to, to take on this training and partner with Adesia. And I really didn't know anything about the company, of course. Uh, did a little bit of research and creeped on their website, which I try to do before uh, <laughs> going in to uh, any training situation. Got to know them a little bit. And, you know, the funny thing is with Adesia, I realized that uh, – that they made the product, but in my my former life, uh, flying C-130s for the Air National Guard, we delivered the product. I mean, we would fly 
uh, over areas, and sometimes the product had to be delivered uh, via airdrop, and we would we would drop the product over areas where we couldn't land and deliver it. Uh, but but we did a lot of work for USAID and uh, and delivering into areas that were stricken by man-made disasters or natural disasters. Uh, we brought a lot of this product to where it was needed most in the world. And it was so cool. And the other thing is that DCS plant is located right next to the airport where we fly from. So out the window during the training, there go the airplanes uh, right outside. So we had we we had a a natural basis for connection between uh, between us. It was it was it was a great way to start. So I think there's a couple bullet points we need to connect to tell this story. We've got strengths. We've got a company in Rhode Island that makes peanut paste bars. And then we've got Marcus as their strengths coach who realizes I used to deliver these. <laughs> so <laughs> let's also remember you've got connectedness number one. Marcus, what was that moment like for you when you realized all these things were connected? Uh, I When I start a training, I mean, I, I have to feel some kind of connection. I have to build a connection with between uh, relator, developer, and connectedness. Uh, the introduction for me is important. And then going into to our series of trainings, uh, having this uh, pre-made connection already, it made me feel like I was part of their team. You know, they once that product leaves uh, their plant, uh, it's out of their hands. And then this was kind of like the delivery end of it, uh, even though it was done through the Air Force and, and, a, and a U.S. government asset trying to do good things out in the world. Uh, it was so cool to continue that journey beyond the walls of Odysseus and uh, and get it out there. And it was a it was a like a, a beautiful connection. So the stars are aligning and the players are meant to be where they are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's back up just one step. Priscilla, can you tell us what is Edicia and what's unique about your experience as their HR manager? So Edicia is a nonprofit uh, that manufactures ready-to-use foods, um, foods that look like the pouch that I shared before. Uh, it's a peanut paste product to treat and prevent malnutrition in children all over the world. Um, since we started in 2010, we've shipped to over 55 countries. We've reached over 10 million children um, that are experiencing all types of malnutrition from severe cases, the ones that you probably recognize from looking at UNICEF ads on TV um, to the cases where you find children who have some access to food, um, but not the right variety of foods and need uh, some preventative products um, to make sure that they're fully developing and growing as children should be. Um, and so I've been there for eight years. I joined the team in 2011 and um, I've seen the company go through so much growth and evolution and um, it's a wonderful, magical place to be in because you're, you know, I'm doing something I love, which is connecting with mm -hmm. people and seeing people thrive and grow. Um, but I'm also, I also know that every single impact that we make um, at work is impacting the lives of young children all over the world. Um, and it's, it's a great feeling to come to go to work and leave work and know that um, you've made a difference in someone's life. Someone's alive because of some work that you've done. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's what makes it so special for us. Yeah, that's incredibly powerful. How did Clifton Strengths become something important to you, thinking about this manufacturing environment? So it was evident when I joined LRI's uh, 2017 class that, like I said before, this was something that was celebrating what was right in people. And really... Um, equalizing the playing field so that everyone felt like they were contributing something to a cause to their workplace. Um, and I wanted that for all of the employees at EDC. I wanted all, all 105 employees to know and to feel that they were being celebrated for what the contributions that they've made so far to this uh, mission um, and to not focus on what's wrong with them and the weaknesses they have, but what is right with them. And for some of our employees, um, we have a group of employees that are refugees who have resettled in Rhode Island. And this is their very first 
um, employment opportunity ever. We have employees who grew up in a refugee camp, um, were born and raised, um, and this is their first chance to really make um, a life for themselves and for their families, have gone through a lot of trauma and have heard over and over again, um, something's wrong with me. Life has just sent them all these messages um, and all these uh, traumatizing experiences. And to me, this was a gift um, that we were able to, to share with them to say, look, you've got five things that make you who you are, special, unique, um, and let's take an opportunity and understand what those five things are, celebrate you. Um, and, and that was one of the most uh, incredible, I think, takeaways from our experience in the last three years. Um, some people were not very comfortable with that in some cultures, talking about yourself and self-reflecting on yourself is not a place of comfort. Uh, but I think Marcus and I worked together to try to make it uh, an opportunity for them to understand uh, in a way that we met them where they were. Mm. So we tried to find ways to explain strengths in a way that they could understand, that they could relate. Um, and like I said before, they, they're they now reflecting on what those strengths are. They're utilizing them day to day. And, and we try to celebrate them in different ways. Um, whether it's posting things on our facility or interviewing a couple of employees a week to spotlight their top five. Uh, they get to talk more and the, the conversation hopefully will continue to grow from here. I am just, I knew this. I didn't know all of this. And I'm just kind of blown away by how many things you just leaned into that typically <laughs> scare people away from from talking about strengths. I mean, the industry alone is an excuse that a lot of people use of this isn't a typical work environment or this they're not going to have time for this or they're not used to having a coaching conversation. Then you add the fact that you've got people where this is in many cases their first experience in a professional setting like this. Um and what did you say you have 24 different languages being spoken among among the people here at Adesia? We just added 25 3 years ago. So 24 spoken and our 25th language is our strengths language. It's a common language that we um regardless of our um you know skill level or what role we play in the organization whether you work uh packing the product or cleaning the floors um, we all understand enough about strengths now that we can carry a conversation, difficult ones, ones about growth um, and potential for growth in, in the workplace. Um, so we're 25 languages in 23 countries represented in our team. I want to hear in a moment about the process of how you started this and what you've done along the way. But before I do that, I am <laughs> just really want to know what made you think you could pull this off? I didn't think about that in the moment. I just thought about the opportunity that I, I had in front of me and how can I take that opportunity that was given to me through LRI and share it with those that I spend most of my day with um, and let them know that there was this special way that they could be um, celebrating what's right about them. And I didn't think about how hard it would be I didn't consider, um, you know, the language uh, barrier in some cases. I just knew that we had to find a way to explain this um, and meet people where they were to understand um, what's right about them, what's valuable um, in them, and 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 that's. I wasn't at least I wasn't afraid to jump into this, um, and I and I walked side by side with Marcus and who was somebody that I connected with in my class and um, hearing from his experience and hearing that he had delivered these products. Um, I said, this is, this is the person that was meant to cross paths with me to, to make this happen at Edicia. So, and everyone there thinks the same, which is great. Um, they all love him and they all talk about him. Aww. Um, you know, remember those, those aha moments during their trainings and ask what's going to happen in 2020. What are you bringing to us and, and want to learn more, want to explore more, want to, want to dig deeper into this. So that's a great feeling. Marcus, tell us a bit about how these paths crossed. What, what was the first thing that you started to do and how did this plan become reality? 
Um, well, you know, first uh, talking with uh, Priscilla, we we started back in in 2017 with the senior managers, and so there were probably 10 or 12 in a room, and it was the for me pretty typical three hour intro to strength training. This is what it's about, and of course, you mentioned that you know fluency in in learning this new language is important. Fluency comes with practice. It comes with mindfulness uh, of what these words mean and and how you see them in the workplace and in your personal life and in each other. Uh, but but fluency, as as you heard Priscilla talk about, took on a whole new meaning down the road a little bit. <clears throat> so we started in 2017 with the with the senior managers. That was fun. I got a tour of the plant. I got to know a little bit about what Adesia did. Uh, but but mostly the people that we trained then were born and raised in the United States. And uh, and like I said, pretty, pretty typical training. Uh, and in February uh, 2018, we went back to uh, and, and Priscilla, jump in here anytime. We, we went back and talked to managers, directors and supervisors to try to use strengths to solve a business problem. Uh, they were growing so much. They were adding a line. They were adding a third shift uh, and they were having these growth issues with any business that's trying to do that. We said, let's try using strengths to to tackle some of that. Uh, and we we actually had had a pretty cool session. Uh, some things were coming out there. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, between these senior managers to say, and we, we really use the, uh, the best of us worksheet. And so, so we have the warehouse person say, you'll get the best of me when you tell me how much product you want to store. You can add all the product to the line you want, but I just have no place to put it. And the people looking at him going, well, you'll get the worst of us when you don't tell us you need more space. And, and, and so great, you know, really cool things came out of that meeting, but it was, it was the third iteration where Priscilla called and said, hey, you're coming back to do everybody on all three shifts. And so and I think a two and a half week period, we hit every person and all the shift workers and their in their first line supervisors. And that is where everything changed. You know, up until then, it was it was a business issue and, and not so much an employee engagement story, but really more the technicality of strengths in a business environment and, and how that can work. But man, when we brought the shift workers in and we did like, you know, the intro slide, tell us where you're from, what you do here and how you first uh, used the strength in your life. You know, when you were young, how do you see uh, one of those strengths being manifested? And the stories that came out in that introduction as they went around the room, you know, when when somebody says to you, uh, I was born in a refugee camp and I use the strength just to survive and get the food we needed for our family when I was younger. What what do you say to that? You know, uh, how do you how do you use that? And I was I, I knew that this was going to be a very different turn with this organization from that point on. Uh, and and I have to tell you about Priscilla, because, you know, Talk about terrific. I mean, she was in every training and she was, when we did the shift work, the shift folks, uh, she was walking around to everyone, uh, looking in their eyes saying, are you getting this? And then pulling them aside, speaking to them in a different language or a language that they may be able to understand a little bit better uh, until they, she saw the recognition in their face and then they came back to the table. I mean, she was all around just really making this happen. I have to tell you, when when we would take a break and Priscilla would talk to me, she knew the background of every person in there. She could tell me where they were from, what their family situation was. I mean, she is so tightly uh, interwoven with everyone there to talk about pulling out the best in people. I mean, uh, without Priscilla, none of this really would have happened. So it was so cool to be able to see her at work and just sit back and go, wow, this is, this is pretty cool stuff. 
Well, let me just jump on that bandwagon. I was going to save this for the end, but Priscilla, the way you answered my question earlier about what made you think you could actually do this, I'm probably going to steal as an example when I teach how to select for talent. I mean, just your instinct of, I never thought I couldn't. And I was driven by the mission that it had to happen. Um, that's pretty beautiful. I'd love to know from both of you. Um, so whoever feels like they have an answer first, just go ahead and jump in. What were some of the most memorable moments as you were as you were starting this, or even as you're thinking about even just day to day? What are those nuggets of interaction that really stick in your mind as you were rolling this out? I mean, for me, definitely that first question where all of our employees on the shift trainings got to share what was their first memory of using one of their top five. And it sort of validated some of the things that come out in the workplace and the things that they uh, feel most uh, strongly about and, and um, the things that they, they, they want to explore further. So one example I can share is we had a lot of learners in the room and um, their experiences growing up and how learning became such an important um, aspect of their life, even in the most severe cases where, you know, learning was at points not an option, they found incredible ways to continue to fulfill that need. Um, and so how that plays out in the workplace and how they're never satisfied with the status quo, they always want to learn more, they always want to explore different areas of the business. Um, and so we do a lot of cross training. Um, you know, one of the one of the special things I believe at EDC is that we're not we're not promoting staff based on length of service and based on how specialized a specialized skill you could have in one area. We are we are giving growth opportunities to everyone on that manufacturing floor, and we value. Um, what, how many positions they have learned, how many different um, workstations they have uh, uh, been able to train and, and be certified in. Um, and for a lot of our learners, this, this, was, this was another gift to just work, work somewhere where they weren't told, you're just gonna pack boxes of these sachets for eight, 10 hours a day, every day, six days a week. No, you're gonna get to do that on Monday and on Tuesday, you get to work in the warehouse and drive the forklift and move the pallets. On Wednesday, you get to make the paste. Um, on Thursday, you may get to do the quality checks for everyone on your shift. Um, and um, that was one of the, the big takeaways to just hear in the room how this is, was important to them. And as an HR manager to ensure that when I walked out of this training, I went back to our operational managers and ensured that they had the time, the flexibility to continue to prioritize cross training. Uh, one of the things we do is we, we carry more staff intentionally to make sure that this is happening so that it's never an excuse that if we have people out on vacation or that we are running so lean out on that floor that the person that really needs that to have that learning opportunity to feel fulfilled at work that they don't get that opportunity. So um, those are business decisions that have a lot of implications, but um, it, it validates this family environment that we fostered over the last nine years, um, that it's not just about getting the work done. It's also about making sure that this person is happy, fulfilled, productive, mm -hmm. um, and um, not just from the mission standpoint, which is sort of the gift we all get to work at EDC, but just every day, what's important to you? What do you need to be successful? Um, that came out in those conversations during those, those during those trainings with Marcus and for everyone. And they were they were in a safe environment to speak out about those um, those challenges or those needs they had, um, and to also validate to us that some of those needs were being addressed by us. So that was really important. That was an important moment. Did you find um, in that, and Marcus, maybe you can answer this question as well, that uh, because of the self-awareness and because of the framework, which they began to be able to talk about themselves and put some of these things they knew they were intrinsically good at, uh, now they have a framework to talk about it. Would they begin to sort, and maybe this is a HR thing as well, did you find they began to sort into areas where they may come back and say, hey, 
I really would like to try this, or I'd really like to move into this area and do these kinds of things more. Did you, did you find that began to happen? Cause in a, in a, in a lot of places, they never get that option. It's come and mm -hmm. pack, right? That's mm -hmm. what you're saying. But did you find as they began to go through that self-discovery process, those conversations, they felt freer or those conversations happened more? I think it became easier to have those conversations. We also incorporate strengths in our performance review process for year end. Um, so they, that that's a pass. That's an opportunity to open the door to have those conversations with their direct uh, manager to talk about what are the important things for them for the next year in terms of hitting those objectives. Um, but to be able to use that 25th language and say, look, this isn't just important to me because I want to be promoted because I want to make more money to be able to provide uh, more opportunities for my family. Um, but because this is something I need, I need this in order for me to feel fulfilled, mm -hmm. successful and productive here. Um, and to know that the managers understand that this is important for them, that um, if they are using strengths and in um, channeling um, those top five, then they're going to they're going to listen more intentionally to that request and they're going to make sure that that happens um, now. You know, we do have to run certain areas of the business every day in order to meet this mission. So they understand that, too. Um, but in those cases where we have those opportunities, for example, we have employees who might cross train with quality um, for a couple of hours a day. We might work with, a, you know, with a particular team on a project. We will make sure that they get pulled out so that they can have that opportunity um, for those that have communications and like to be part of our tours, to we have tours almost every week where we get to to share our you know our story, walk through the manufacturing facility, which is very high tech. So a lot of people love to come by and see all of the automation there. Um, those employees that really enjoy to be on the spotlight and like to speak and communicate and interact with people um, get those opportunities. Um, we. We try to uh, keep that on top of mind and, and, and provide those opportunities wherever we can. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. What kind of investment did you make in manager education so that you, you made sure that the people who were interacting with your frontline workers really understood the nature of strengths and how they could support them? So first we started with managers and directors, as Marcus shared. We wanted to make sure they understood, understood the framework first um, in order then to be able to bring that to our shifts. Um, and uh, in those trainings, Marcus um, addressed, gave them the information, all the background, the, the foundation of what strengths is and um, you know how it comes out in the workplace, but took it a step further to talk about how to use that and how to best leverage that in, in each individual working for them. So there was a lot of open conversation about that. And um, Marcus, you can share a little bit more about some of the techniques we use there to get the supervisors to understand, like, this isn't just about you gaining this, but how could you take this a step further and bring it, um, bring it to your team? Right. Uh, so we, we, uh, for me, a big part of strengths is uh, philosophy. For, and, and I realized, realized this pretty quickly when, when I started uh, getting out there and coaching that I always believed this stuff. You know, I coached uh, boys and girls high school volleyball when I, first, when I was starting, I was still coaching. Uh, and I coached in college for a long time. And this is what coaches do. We, our job is to quickly assess who's going to be good where and then, you know, uh, develop their positional talents of each player and get them to come together as a team to to use those talents uh, to for the, the end goal of, of what we wanted to accomplish as a team. And so so I, I see my job when I go into a training just in, in this year was no different. Um, is to convince them that they already believe this, that this is already their philosophy, that they believe in looking for what's good in people and leveraging what's great about them to make it even better. 
uh, and then looking around and seeing how, when a particular task is there, how people who have other strengths can fill in to, uh, to have more, a more complete picture and work together as a team to accomplish that goal. So, so the interesting part is always uh, convincing them that, that they believe this anyway, and then here's how you can put it to use day to day in your work and as you interact with each other, as you look at yourself, and also as you, uh, as you go forward with, with the mission and growth of Adesia. Marcus, how did your experience with Adesia change your practice as, as a technician, as a facilitator? What do you do differently now because of this experience? <clears throat> well, uh, Micah, it, it just opened my eyes to, to the possibilities. And if, and if I would, if I could preempt your, your probably ultimate question is what would I tell other coaches? Mm -hmm. uh, it would be this, it would be uh, always be open to the unexpected, always be open to these uh, light bulb moments or what I would call uh, really some magic that's going to happen that, that you really were a part of, but then took on a life of its own. And, and that's exactly what happened at Adesia. When, <clears throat> When we sat in a room with people from 16, 17 different countries, and we see them, regardless of their background, understanding uh, why when somebody walks in a room, it all of a sudden brightens up because this person has positivity. And they look around and say, yeah, that's her. That's her. Every time she comes in, they get it. They understood it. And to see those light bulbs go on and, and, and people to realize that universally, I mean, we talk about a universal language. This is number 25. It's not English. It's not Spanish. It's not anything else. It's strengths in this environment. It was, it was just so cool, so cool to see that happen. And then, then things became easier. Things became, uh, uh, things became more fun to watch. And, and if I was going to tell coaches anything, I would say, man, just be open to, to some unexpected possibilities as you open people's eyes to the potential of uh, seeing what's right with people, what their gifts are, and putting them into the position where they can use those to the best of their ability. It does sound like philosophy is maybe a underrated importance in how you teach strengths is making sure that just understanding what the idea of strengths is comes across. Um, for either Priscilla or Marcus, were there different ways of explaining that philosophy that really translated well across language or even specific ways of saying <laughs> it in certain languages that made that light bulb come on? Hey, hey, uh, Mike, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to preempt Priscilla for a second. That this is the this is the most fun part. So so everybody either had a parent or is a parent, right? Mm -hmm. What what do parents do with their kids? They look around when they're very young to see where they uh, what what opens their eyes to things. Do they plink out things on a piano? Do they start dancing in front of the TV? And then what do you do? What do good parents do? They give them opportunities. Oh, she dances all the time. Let's get her into a dance class or let's give them music lessons or let's uh, take them outside and kick her soccer ball with them if they're showing some athletic ability. They, they put them in that position to, to uh, fertilize that natural talent that they're seeing in their kids, whether it's math or athletics, doesn't matter. That's what good parents do. And, and that's kind of a universal, uh, universal thing. Uh, and, Almost everyone has watched sports. Everybody appreciates some kind of uh, athletics, uh, whether it's Olympics or, or their favorite team. So I put up a picture of my senior volleyball guys from 2016. And you got one guy who's this tall, a couple other guys that are that tall. You got a couple of guys that are really short. And I asked them, I said, if you know nothing about volleyball, who would you put on the front row? And they go, <laughs> oh, 22, 15, and 7. Why? Well, because they're tall. I said, but you don't know anything about them or their abilities. Yeah, but they're going to be able to jump and swing at the ball up there. I said, what about Pete? Pete's five six. Uh, we wouldn't put him up there. I said, why? Maybe he could really jump. He said, but he'll never be able to jump as high as uh, as number twenty two. And I said, see, you get it. You understand this. Uh, Pete has other abilities. It's Pete who 
He's the quickest guy on the team that can save the ball so that the big guys can get their shoulder over an eight-foot net. But now they say, oh, yeah. I said, this is what you need to do at work uh, to, to figure out. I said, what's, the, what's one of the jobs for athletic coaches? To figure out what each player is going to be good at, right? We're not going to take Tom Brady and put him on uh, the line in football. You know, he's just not built that way. His head's not built that way. And he's too valuable where he's at. It, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that with our kids. Why would you do it at work? Mm. Uh, so so it's, it's a fun conversation. It's really helpful just to think about it, convince them that they already know this. Yeah. <laughs> Selvam from Mauritius is joining us in the uh, chat room and asks, um, do we have any examples of return on investment? Uh, Priscilla, anything that you can talk to around what kind of a difference this made? Um, it's hard to quantify in that way, um, but I will say that the self-awareness that came from understanding what they were naturally good at and having that chance to celebrate what they're naturally good at gave us um, sort of a faster track in our cross-training efforts, which as any company can appreciate is a huge expense um, in terms of time, money, and energy. So um, being more self-aware of what people were naturally good at while also going through this cross training effort that um, I had shared before, just gave us that chance to say, okay, well, these are the people that we need to focus on, on these particular areas or, or pieces of equipment based on what we already know of them. Um, that that's sort of the way that we've we've taken that and and, and you you use that in our in our management team discussions on how to get everyone cross trained and and ready to go and look in our in our line of work we have to have always the staff available to run all all lines i mean we're getting calls from unicef world food program the us government um, when we get when we're getting those calls and we, they're sending orders to us is because the situation is pretty serious. Um, and the last thing we want is to um, not be able to say yes to that order because we understand the impact that that um, answer has on other children and and take it a step further. We have to say no, because we don't have the team in place to be able to make that happen. Um, and so we talk a lot about that with our team um, at Edicia. And like I said, we use we have used strengths to be able to inform that conversation of those cross training efforts so that we are always um, have that A team uh, ready to go. When the call comes, we're ready. I, I think though, uh, and, and Priscilla jump in here because uh, we, Priscilla and I were talking about this the other day. This story is about the humanity of strengths. It's not about the numbers. It's not about what it brings so much. Some of the intangibles are immeasurables. But think of the value of having workers who see uh, this as a gift. Uh, when you receive a gift like this, and Priscilla will tell you, uh, they are grateful. They're grateful for what Adesia is doing for them. Uh, they they come to work joyful. They are enjoying each other's company. They're the hardest workers you're going to find. And you ask them to come early or stay late or, or add, uh, you know, change their shift around. They're there to do it because they see what Priscilla is doing there as a gift. Uh, and I think that's where the value is. Priscilla, talk about that a little bit. Just the same stories you were telling me yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, um, there are a lot of manufacturing companies out there, but who's going to stop for three hours, um, arrange a training like this, um, have everyone take their assessment. Um, I personally took the time to sit down with every person at, before these trainings came about to print their assessments, to read it through with them, to make sure that they understood those top five words and their descriptions underneath each of those. Um, to pair them with individuals that spoke the same language um, that could do that with them. Um, because we want to make sure they understood what makes them who they are, what makes them special. Um, and, and, you know, 
that I, I don't know what number you put on that. I don't know what price tag that has. I can tell you, I have employees thanking me all the time, asking me for Marcus to come back, <laughs> um, asking me for, you know, utilizing those words uh, to be able to, to, to ask for more growth opportunities, more challenge, uh, challenging opportunities at work. The other piece we haven't talked about is conflict resolution. And in a company with 24 languages and several cultures and different um, literacy levels, how do you address conflict? Because that will happen in any workplace. And so to be able to talk about strengths in that capacity and to be able to have people understand where each other is coming from because of these 34 words and descriptions that we now have available to us has been powerful. Um, why does the person that is in the executing domain needs, does that, needs to have, um, feel like they are accomplishing things, that they're checking things off um, versus the person that is, is a relationship building person needs to have those conversations before helping you check off those boxes or the person in the strategic end who's so focused on the future and doesn't really care about the day to day. Um, and talk about conflict when you've got to get the work done and you have to focus on the day to day, but you rather be talking about what's going to happen five years from now. And how do, you know, how do people perceive that in the workplace and how can you get people to understand each other and where they're coming from? and just give them that nugget of what's important to them first before you have that difficult conversation. Um, and so I sit through a lot of facilitated meetings as you probably can appreciate <laughs> and, and strengths is, is part of my toolbox. I bring that out right away. And I first talk about, well, this is where Marcus, this let's talk about strengths and let's talk for a minute about what is important to Marcus in how he might have perceived this situation. And let's talk about Jim and how he might have perceived the situation based, based on what is important to him, based on his strengths. And you just see the nods like, oh, I didn't consider that. I didn't consider that at all. Um, and it just makes the conversation go much more smoother because it's, it's not about the problem, it's about people and just mm -hmm. how we all react to things in different ways. Um, so that's also been another takeaway for us. Um, and, and one that I encourage anyone that's in a role where they're facilitating conflict resolution, which every manager is, um, and coaches obviously are sometimes brought in for that as well, to, to just use that as that language, that vehicle to be able to talk about you know, workplace situations, which happen all the time, even in a beautiful, magical, special place like Edicia, <laughs> which we all love to come to work to, we have disagreements, we tackle issues differently. Um, and we we prioritize things in different ways based on what's important to us. Priscilla, did you have a specific push around this is how you use strengths for conflict resolution? Or is it just in how you have facilitated the conversations? No, I didn't have a specific push. I think I saw this as an as another tool that I had available at my fingertips, and I wanted to leverage that in this capacity too. Um, I didn't see it; just became natural when I had two people in a room that didn't understand where each other was coming from and could not talk to each other about how that how that particular conflict, how they perceived it to be, how they felt in that moment. And it gave us the language to be able to speak around that. Um, it just came natural. Um, it wasn't something that was intentional. And as soon as I saw that it was um, a successful conversation that we had with a few folks, I said, oh, I've got to keep this going. Um, I've got to keep using this. Um, and so people expect it now. People expect to hear just a reminder, okay, let's just step back for a minute and let's talk about, you know, how this, this would have played out if you would have channeled, you know, this person's strengths and, and what, what's important to them. Um, and, and that's been, that's been a, a, another beautiful gift of this experience, this journey. 
we have all of our strengths in our cubes, in our offices. Um, I do strength spotlight of two individuals once a week where I sit down with them and interview them on what's, you know, for, for developing further the, the best of me tool. Mm -hmm. um, post this everywhere in our facility. And um, these are ways that we're keeping the conversation alive and going. So, you know, I, I have discipline and focus. People know when that door is closed, <laughs> I am rocking and rolling and in my lane and I, I am not self-aware of what else is going on in my world. Um, and so to walk into my office and see that as a reminder, they won't take it personal. They won't hopefully feel um, as strong about, well, you know, her door is closed. I, I can't access her. Like, what kind of HR manager is she? Well, no, this, this is where I'm at my best when I'm focused. Um, you know, when I'm, when I am in doing one thing and doing it well. Um, and, and that's, that's been one of the other experiences we've had is, is, you know, to lighten up the conversations that are very difficult to have. There's so much about this. That's really beautiful as, um, it, part of my role is to help consult around how organizations can make the change that you've talked about making. And it's really easy for people to get lost in the, what tools are we going to use? What kind of modules do we need to offer? What kind of collateral do we have even beyond strengths? When you ask people, you know, how do you build a culture all too often? I have people tell me we have a monthly gift card drawing, or we have a recognition program. And what I'm learning from you and, and is becoming really clear in my mind's eye is that when you lead with philosophy, then the idea of strengths isn't so much about the flashy toys. Right. It isn't so much about the activities. It's let's ground people in what they already know to be true and then release them to go do it. That's right. I want to ask the importance of Leadership Rhode Island to, to both of you. And Marcus, let me th start with you. How important has it been for both of you to have Leadership Rhode Island behind you, with you, walking with you along the way on this? Well, I mean, just the mechanics of coaching, you know, they schedule, they, uh, they match coaches with appropriate venues. Uh, they look at, uh, you know, they look at our own schedules and, and they do the paperwork. So, so we show up and we engage. That's it. We don't, we don't have to do the background information. We don't have to prepare the packets for everybody. We show up and coach and they make it easy for us to coach. They also uh, really are great with the network that we have uh, of the thousands of graduates that have been through the program. They spread the word and, and the word gets out there pretty quickly through the Leadership Rhode Island network. So uh, always behind the coaches 100%, always giving us everything we need to, to do a great job and free us uh, from uh, from the, the administrivia and just let us have fun with coaching. I like that word, Priscilla. So look, if it wouldn't have been for the 2017 core program and in being introduced to Leadership Rhode Island a few months earlier than that when I applied, I wouldn't have known about strengths really um, as early as I did. Of course, probably Rhode Island's pretty small. Everybody knows everybody. And <laughs> Um, I probably would have come across it at some point, but I wouldn't have appreciated it to the level that I have today. Um, there's other, there's also another four individuals at work who have gone through the core program every year since 2016, we have been sending one individual um, to participate. And so these are ambassadors of strengths and the value and impact that it has at, at Udicia too. So it's not just Priscilla, um, driving this bus, it's I've got a whole gang behind me, um, ready to go and, and speaking eloquently about strengths um, and and utilizing them for, like I said, conflict resolution and, and promotions and growth opportunity discussions. Um, and that was thanks to Leadership Rhode Island and, and putting this on the forefront, putting this right in front of our face day one. I mean, I think it was the first session day that we discussed strengths amongst the class um and and got a chance to, to see some of the tools and use some of the tools that we have not have now implemented at edicia um and and they're a great resource they've been a great resource a great partner 
Um, I'm always proud and excited to say that I'm part of part of this um, distinguished group of people who are celebrating what's right with people and um, and always um, ready to share the story with anyone and encourage others that are in this journey or trying to find a resource or a tool to jump right in and, and see if this is something that fits their organization because it has fit mine. And even with all the challenges we have, we have found it to be a great gift for us. So um, I'm always pro leadership Rhode Island. As are we. It's it's fantastic to really get to see that this entire movement around having a strengths community is all about the connections that you make and having that shared philosophy and that shared belief that this is worth investing in. It's um to borrow your words, I'm proud and excited to be part of a community that includes Leadership Rhode Island and all of your your fantastic folks there at Adesia. Um, I want to give Priscilla the final word. So I'm gonna go to Marcus first. Marcus, what else needs to be said or heard or celebrated about this story? It's it's just such a compelling uh, compelling story when when you know for for most of the trainings uh, it it stays at the business level uh, but this goes far beyond the business level to really the humanity of strengths I know I said that before but but I can't say it enough really opened my eyes uh, and of course four of my five are in relating so <laughs> totally at home uh, with with the Adesia environment but but uh, just just so great to get there and and uh and so great to have been able to partner with priscilla especially and adesia in general good stuff thanks priscilla the last word goes to you what do we need to say share or celebrate i think we've covered most of it at this point i just you know just it, it's been an unexpected journey that we've gone on and hope to continue to be on for, for the future and um, to bring everyone that's coming new to the organization into this fold and to appreciate um, what others have already learned to appreciate. Um, and like I said, you know, it's, it's a gift and that's how we, we put it out to, to all of our employees and, and, and our managers. This is a gift. This is an opportunity to celebrate what's right in people. And if you focus on that, um, it's not as overwhelming and you don't get uh, bogged down by the technicality of what this could be. This is really simply what's right in people, what makes them special, what makes them tick, what, what, what are the things that they value the most? Mm -hmm. um, and if you really focus on those things, um, then, then you'll be good um, and you'll be able to really carry this out, um, you know, whether you're in a smaller organization or not, don't have the, the right funding to be able to put out all of the different programs and um, different ways to keep the conversation alive. If you focus on that, then you will, you will have achieved the goal of, of putting strengths out into the organization. Um, so yeah, that's what I would share. <laughs> Well, thanks for thanks for joining us to tell this story today. Um, before I hand it back to Jim, I also want to say thank you to him. Uh, I don't always get to join Called to Coach, and this is really the first seed of how do we connect a community was this podcast and this this YouTube experience right here that, in fact, started just as a conference call idea that Jim Carlson said yes to. So, Jim, thank you for everything that you do. I think today is a great full circle moment to get to see how all of these seeds that we're spreading out there are, are sprouting and growing and changing and just becoming something, as you said, Marcus, really about the humanity of the experience. I'll also, I'll throw in one thing, you know, you guys, your, your mission is to feed hungry people and really at, in the workplace, you're feeding hungry talent, right? There's people coming who are hungry to use their talent on a daily basis. That's all they really want to do. And so what a great way to kind of tie that together is the mission and purpose of what you're doing. I showed your website a little bit uh, earlier on that. And we'll have some information in the show notes about how to get connected to that uh, if you have more, want more information. But how great it is for you to be able to share that with people who are hungry to use their talent. So I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, thanks to Mike for uh, calling me and saying, hey, I got this great story <laughs> we need to tell. And uh, and so we jumped on it and got it done. So I appreciate you guys. You guys hang tight for one second. 
For those listening, we'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the opportunities we have available and all the information we have available through our new Gallup Access platform. Um, you can head out to gallup.com slash CliftonStrengths, send us your questions or comments. You can send those to us in email, or if you want to connect, you can't figure out how to do that. If you want to connect uh, here, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch recorded audio and video of this program, as well as all the past ones that we've ever done. Lots of case studies just like this, literally hundreds of them available on our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search Clifton Strengths. Or if you're a podcast listener and you like to listen to them on your phone, you can do it that way. Any podcast player, put in Gallup Webcast, and you will see all the podcasts that we have available for you there. If you're interested in any training uh, that we have available um, through our site, you can head out to courses.gallup.com. If you want to get registered for one of these live sessions that are coming up, you've enjoyed the live experience. By the way, I want to thank the 25 or so who've joined us live uh, uh, right now and the questions that came in. You can do that through our Eventbrite page. That's just gallup.eventbrite.com. And of course, join the conversation on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, and we'll look forward to the next call to coach. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.